Good afternoon, Tom here again for another Fire Fridays episode. This month uh, was June and we decided to do a Q&A uh, forum. We had lots of good people, lots of people coming in asking us questions, got a whole list right here. Uh, we took the most common ones that we kept getting and we're going to answer them for you today. So the first question is, uh, what gear do you use and why? Um, so with our turnout gears, we have our structural firefighting gear and then we have something called our EMS gear, which is basically structural gear without certain layers in it. Um, we have our probationary firefighter, Kyle Jeffrey here. He's gonna demonstrate the gear that we have. So right now he's putting on what we call our bunker pants, which is basically just our structural pants and coat. Uh, the hood that he's got on is called a Nomex hood that uh, protects him from the fire. It's fire resistant. Um, protects the face, the ears, so nobody gets, so you don't get burned. Uh, as you can see, the coats are very heavy, the jackets are very heavy, pants are very heavy. All together, with, when he puts his air pack on, it'll be about an extra 80 to 100 pounds. So depending on what he carries in his gear and everything like that, so, as you see right now, he's putting out his air pack. You will see Kyle likes to use, wear his radio on the outside. A lot of guys put it in the pocket up here. That's what I do. It's just personal preference. Um, he's putting his helmet on, gloves, and that right there will weigh anywhere between an extra 80 pounds, so um, it's even heavier when it's wet, like everything does. So, but it's made up of three layers. You can see your layers, you've got your chemical layers, your thermal layers, your outer shell. So, that in a nutshell is our gear to protect us from. Uh, like I said, then we have our face piece there, which helps us uh, breathe into when we are in an IDLH environment. Another good question we got was how. How can someone become a firefighter paramedic? Well, we you gotta go through uh, what we call a fire academy, which is like anywhere between about six months class. Uh, it teaches you basic fire, your fire one, two, um, how to fight a fire, thermal dynamics, everything like that. Then once you have to be, once you become certified by the state, you uh, can go anywhere in the state and take be a firefighter. Um, now we have two other certifications, There's three. Three certifications when it comes to the medical side. You have uh, MFR, EMT, and paramedic. All Madison Heights firefighters are cross-trained as paramedics, which we are the highest level uh, of pre-hospital there is. Uh, pre-hospital medical care. To go through an EMT, you have to go through an EMT academy, which is about about six months as well. And then to go through a to go through a paramedic school is about two years. Um, it goes more in depth to medications that we can use and more uh, other equipment that we have, specialized equipment for the paramedic. All right, uh, what's the difference between a firefighter and a paramedic? A uh, firefighter is basically just goes into the fires and uh, structural firefighters do that. And then we have your paramedic, which runs the medical side. All, like I said before, all medicine heads firefighters are cross-trained as firefighter paramedics, so we do both. So a paramedic rides on the ambulance and then firefighters ride on the fire engine most of the time. But since we're all cross-trained, all of us are cross-trained, we can go back and forth between the two. So, here was a good question. How do you plan meals and who cooks for the day? So that was a pretty common question that we had. So how we plan it is who's ever driving on the engine is gonna be the cook for the day. So they plan the meals, they uh, tell you a consensus with what the shift wants, and then we go from there. They'll go shopping, they'll come back and repair it, and everything like that. Which is kind of nice up here, with all of us being at one station right now, is we have two engineers a day, so they kind of go back and forth on cooking and everything. Like today I'm cooking dinner, and Firefighter Lecluse. Firefighter Lecluse. How has technology changed uh, being a firefighter? 
Um, it's been made becoming a firefighter safer. Uh, our gear uh, is more than that. Our gear is safer. We have more uh, cancer presumption. They're doing more things for pro pro health for us. Uh, as you can see, the flammable vents to uh, remove the exhaust when the truck start up. That way, it's not lingering in the, in the station. Uh, technology, we now have thermal imaging cameras on our air packs that every firefighter wears and goes into a fire. He has his own thermal imaging camera. Our masks, our air bottles can last longer now. Uh, it's just all around the technology is becoming better and better. And we're switching from more gas engine stuff to battery operated, which is becoming better. Um, yeah. So another thing is with the trucks, the trucks have become more and more soundproof. So you don't hear a lot of the road noise with them. You can have a full conversation with the person next to you. And while you're going lights and sirens, you're talking in a normal voice, while the rest of the world is, ah, with their ears because of the sirens. So, I just got a few more questions here. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a firefighter, can you shadow the department? Uh, I believe so. So uh, you can, you have to uh, go through the proper channels. We talk to reach out to somebody here and you can possibly shadow with just uh, clear it with the chief make sure everything's okay with that um, feel free to contact me I'll be able to help you with that if you want to and we're always looking for new uh, new recruits if they want to join all right uh, what are some strategies to a fire attack so there are three main strategies you have your offensive your defensive and your transitional so your offensive is your rescue guys or who's ever on scene first is going right in and hitting that fire. So it's basically, if it's just a bedroom and those guys can get in there and knock it down quick, that's the best way to do it. Your defensive is if it's a huge fire that is uh, out of control that it's not safe to send anybody into, you're going to send defensive and you're most likely going to set up big water, which is two and a half inches hose and master streams. And then you have something called a transitional attack where you take it and you can hit, hit a room reset that fire is what it's called, cooling that room down, and then you can switch into an offensive mode from there. So, uh, when it comes to that, one of some of the biggest fires we had in the city was we had the Edward fire uh, about two years ago now, the 32046 Edward, it was a print shop that was up and fire, that we got called to about midnight-ish, and we were out there for a couple hours, and then, uh, not the year, but it was when DPS uh, caught on fire. That was one of the biggest fires too. So, as for that, if you guys always have questions, feel free to uh, reach out to us. Uh, we should be moving into station two in the next week or so. So look forward to seeing a video from that. So I know Chief did a quick little clip of it, but I plan on doing a more depth tour. Uh, Firefighter Kyle over here is gonna help me with that one too, if he's down south with me. So, hope to have you guys, hope to hear from you guys again. If you guys have any questions, feel free to watch out. Have a good day.